Uh, it is actually tutorial question one on 104, and it is called Van der Mond determinant. And that's something which is connected, even though the question itself, the question 1.4 doesn't really, sorry, 104 doesn't really say that. There's a connection between this question and the one which I discussed with you. Because let's just think about this way. Imagine I have a set of points, which I call capital X. We have n points, real numbers, and I have n values, which I call P set, P1, P2, Pn. So this is a set of numbers, and this is a set of numbers. And imagine I, need to I have a task of finding a polynomial of degree n take 1. Probably I opened it too fast, but yeah, I'll give you time to, to just to copy that. Imagine now I have a task of finding a polynomial, degree of this polynomial n take 1, such that these polynomials at this pre-selected points delivers this, precisely these pre-selected values where j take the value 1, 2, up to n. This is a general setup of any polynomial interpolation problem. It's the one we just solved with you on the previous slide. Here's my general setup of the same problem. Now, if I'd like to solve something like this, I'm not, I'm not going to give you the solution, of course. It's, it's, it's probably a bit naive to expect a formula, direct formula, which gives you the answer. Maybe not, actually. Maybe not so naive. Well, but that, that will be part of my next slide, actually. But at the moment, I'd like, I'd like to discuss with you whether this, is, this problem is solvable or not in general. And if you remember how we solved these sim two similar problems on my slide before, everything boiled down to this system of linear equations, right? With the unknown coefficients in there. And if you just look through this even further, you will realize that everything boils down to this augmented matrix associated with the system of linear equations. What kind of matrix is that? I claim, I claim that the matrix, that matrix we just saw two times on my slide before, in general, it has a structure like this. Look at this. It's the matrix of size n times n, so n rows and n columns. And the first row is simply the powers of the x1 value. Second row, simply the powers of x2 value. Third row is simply the powers of x3, and all of these rows like so. The last row will be the sequence of, uh, of powers, cons uh, consecutive powers, of xn value. Here's a matrix we looked at on my previous slide. I mean, there was also the right-hand side of some sort, but the principal part of that matrix was exactly of this type. And we were solving that matrix, I mean, with the row echelon form reduction. Now, on this slide, I'd like to address the question, when exactly such a matrix is solvable? Such a matrix is called van der Mond matrix. And those of you who remember this stuff from the first semester, you know that we can address the solvability question via row echelon forms and also via determinants. So normally when people discuss these matrices, they actually take the determinant of such a matrix and see when it is zero and when it is non-zero. When it is non-zero, your system your system will be always solvable, and therefore your interpolation problem will always be solvable. You will always be able to find this polynomial which fills in the gaps between the points x1, x2, xn. So on this task, and that is exactly the part of the question 104 in the yellow book, we would like, I would like to compute the exact value for the determinant of this matrix. It looks like it's a hard task, but actually if you execute a nice approach, and complex numbers are very helpful here, you will see that it's not so hard as actually indeed. So I'm going to introduce this notation. V of x for the van der Mond matrix. X, obviously, because the matrix depends on my set of numbers. That's why I reflected this dependence here, you see. It's not a canonical notation, but for the purposes of this slide, it should be fine. Right, 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 right. Let's just compute this determinant. How do we compute determinants? There are a few ways you know from the first semester. I'm going to use this row decomposition method, right? Do you remember the method? What does it say? It say, I'm going to take the first row here, and then what do I do? I uh, sequentially just cross out the first row, first column, and take this smaller determinant. Then I cross out second row, 
and the first, sorry, second column in the first row and take the smaller digit. So normally I do it like this. I do it like this. You see, I crossed out, I crossed out the first row. So if I do my crossing out, first row is gone. First column is gone. Yeah, it's, it's worth taking a picture, I know, yes. <laughs> Uh, first row is gone, first column is gone, so I multiply this number, which I circled out, with this smaller determinant, right? That will be the first term of my expansion, then I take my crop, move it here, right? Here's my number again, first row, and then, I mean, this is a smaller determinant, I take, and I do this n times, I move my cross across the first row, every time I do that, I do the smaller determinant, final will be this one. I'm not going to write this, of course. It's a, it's a, it's an, it's not really something I want to do. Instead, I'd like to put, uh, draw your attention to the following observation. I'd like to draw your attention to the following observation. Every time I do this, every time I do this, the term which will appear, it will have this x1 to the some to some power, and this smaller determinant which appears here. It doesn't carry any x1 anymore. There's no any x1 in there, isn't it? So this second factor, it will be x1 free. So I may think, if I just write this expansion, in terms of x1, I may think of this expansion as a polynomial in the x1 term. Each term in this expansion will be exactly polynomial term with the x1 as a variable. So here we go. That's exactly what I'm trying to say here. If I try to compute this determinant via the row reduction method, it will be the expression like this. These values, a0, a1, a2, a n take 1, they will be minors. There will be some complex expression for those minors. But what's important for my presentation right now is that these minors, they depend only on this smaller set, x1, the set consisting of the points from x2 up to xn. That's what's important. So I may think, I may think of this determinant as a polynomial in the x1 term, polynomial of degree n take 1. That is exactly what I'm going to say here. So if I introduce this notation, p of x1 is this determinant of the van der Mond matrix, then I say that the P is simply polynomial of this degree with real coefficients. So you see we picked up the structure of this determinant even though we were unable to compute it directly yet. Okay. Now here's the second observation I'd like to discuss with you. Okay. Now the second observation I'd like to make is this. It's actually here. Imagine now I take this polynomial. Imagine now I take this polynomial and I compute this polynomial at the point x2. It's a polynomial of x1, but now I plug in the new value in this polynomial, x2. What will happen? Well, effectively, it means that here in the first row, every x1 must be replaced with the x2. But if I do that, my determinant will have two identical rows. It means that the determinant is zero. And that was that's that, that exactly what I just wrote. If I put in my polynomial x2, meaning I have to replace every x1 with the x2, that will give me two identical rows, and that will mean that my determinant delivers zero value. And that is actually true for any other x value. If I put my x3 value into my polynomial, that will make again two identical rows, first and the third one. And my polynomial will vanish. If I put my all other values up to xn, every time I will come up with a zero because every time I will double, I will double the row. Now listen to this. We're looking at the polynomial of degree n take 1, and we know every root of such polynomial. Every root of such polynomial. In complex numbers, we'll learn in such a case we can factorize the polynomial, can we? 
we can factorize the polynomial like so. It will be the highest coefficient of the polynomial from here. And then the rest will be just the, these linear factors. My unknown or my variable of a polynomial and the roots we have just found. Now, the last thing I need to identify for you is this highest coefficient of my polynomial. Highest coefficient is the one which next to the x to the n take 1. This is a coefficient which comes up, which comes up if I take this minor. So my highest coefficient is simply this minor, which I just outlined. But this minor, it's the van der Mond determinant or van der Mond matrix for the set x where x1 is removed. So, in fact, my highest coefficient is the determinant of the, of the same type, but where set x is reduced by one element down to the set x1. So, if you do this, now, if you do the same argument for this smaller determinant, it will be brackets like so, again, and then it will be determined even smaller where the point x2 is removed. So, it's a clear case for the method of mathematical induction. If you continue this method, you eventually find out that this determinant of van der Mond is simply an expression like this, where this symbol you should read like so. It's a product across all possible couples of indices, j and k, where j less than k. So it's a huge, pro it's a huge product. Altogether, we, you will have here how many, how many couples you will have here. How many times you can pick up two numbers from a set of n numbers so that one is less than the other. It's the binomial coefficient cn2, isn't it? Which is the, altogether, it will be uh, n, n take one by two different couples. It will be a lengthy product, but it is a computable product. And now we can answer the question, when, do we, when can we find such a polynomial? We can always find such a polynomial when this determinant returns non-zero value. And this sort of product will be non-zero as soon as we have n distinct points. So the question 104 now, we can interpret it like this. Polynomial interpolation, polynomial interpolation the one which we did on the slide before, is always accomplishable, always achievable, when you're looking at the distinct points. Because the, in that case, the determinant of van der Mond associated with the system of equations you would, you will need, to, you would need to solve is always non-zero. Any questions?